If you're watching this video, you've most likely purchased or are considering the purchase of a set of superior engineering control arms. So today I'm fitting a set to my 80 series and we're going to do a little bit of an instructional video to show you some of the tips and tricks on how to do it. It's really quite a simple procedure, but you're going to need a little bit of strong arm because there's some tight bolts in the job. Now, the first thing you need to do is put the vehicle up on safety stands. Put the safety stands under the differential so that your suspension ride height stays the same. You'll see why later on. Now, after we've done that, we need to get the wheels off and that's just going to give us easier access under the vehicle. And the way to do that is you get your ugga dugger machine out. You haven't heard of the ugga dugger machine? A rattle gun. One ugga dugger for an easy nut. Lots of ugga duggers when they're really tight. And once you've got them off, you get all your nuts and put them in the nut holder, and I keep my nuts up there. So the vehicle's up on safety stands, we've got the wheels off, now it's time to get the bolts undone. I really like to give them a little bit of a clean up because of all the mud and grot, it gets in the threads there, and then it makes the nuts harder to come out. Give them a bit of a clean like that with a dirty old stone, uh, wire brush, and then give her a bit of squirt, yeah, because I'm a good boy, I've pre-loosened these. Otherwise you'd be here watching me sweating and swearing curse and trying to get them undone. Get out our favourite little ugga dugger. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Get that off there and get the bolt out and there she goes. Another tip, see I've already lost the washer. <laughs> doesn't take me long. I like to just put them in bits back together like that. Don't lose things that way. Right. That's out. <laughs> Hit one too many rocks, I think. <laughs> but look at the difference between the old and the new one. Firstly, the diameter of these superior engineering arms is a whole heap thicker. It's a better quality steel and uh, the wall thickness is a lot thicker. So, I mean, it's just stronger all around. Now, the other thing is, because this is bent, the distance between here and here is actually shortened. Therefore, my differential was, the housing was not actually in the correct position. So my wheel alignment was out a little bit because of that. And uh, so putting these new babies in, is gonna fix all of that. Now, another little point for you. When you're doing this job, just do one arm at a time. So we're doing the lower on the passenger side at the moment, and then I'll go through the other side and so on. And that means that you don't have to worry about the differential becoming disconnected and from your vehicle or anything like that. So don't, just don't undo all four of them at once. That's what I'm saying, all right? One at a time. Okay, time to get this in. Okay, now that we've got going back in, just give everything a little bit of a clean up. Get all that road grime and, you know, dirt off. Do, do a good job of it. Now, before you put your bolts in, get some anti seize type product, like Never Seize or any of those. This is a Loctite product. Put that on the threads. And the reason for that, because we're in water and mud, and you know, we use our four wheel drives to go four wheel driving. A little bit of protection doesn't hurt these components at all because our bushes do wear out. And uh, I find that I'm in replacing these sort of bushes and that probably maybe once a year, once every 18 months, thereabout. I get to do this sort of job. Put that back up in there. You'll notice I'm putting this bolt in the other way to what it was when I took it out. That's so that I can get it out easier next time. Alright, get that in there. Not in there. Just do them loosely initially. Don't get too greedy. Raise this bolt up. See the advantage of keeping that nut and washer together? Now that I need it to put it back together, I've got it right there. I don't, I'm not rummaging around in a mess. Try and keep a somewhat clean workspace. Just 
line that up. Come on, baby. Okay. Bit of leftover anti seize on there. Okay, so now that control arm's installed, we're just going to make sure we tighten those two bolts up as tight as you can. There's probably a torque spec for it, but I don't know it. Really tight? Two elbow clicks? Five ugger duggers? I don't know, something like that. Just do it up to really tight. With our four drives, it's a great idea to, as part of your servicing, get under the vehicle, make sure these components are tight. Do it visually every so often, and even do it with a a breaker bar at times as well. Can't hurt. Okay, I'm getting excited. The two lower arms are in and tight, they're done. I've temporarily installed one of the upper arms and I wanna show you how to set them up for the initial install. Now these upper arms are all about adjusting the pinion angle on your differential. That's why they're adjustable. So the first thing we're gonna do, firstly, can I show you something? This is one of the old bushes. Look at that. She's completely destroyed, absolutely flogged out and finished. With your four-wheel drive, it's a great idea to always run a bonded rubber bush. They really are the best thing for us as four-wheel drivers. Okay, now what you need to do, you need to do an initial setup of your adjustable control arm. And the easiest way to do that is to match it onto the top of the arm you've just taken out. Grab a couple of your bolts. Drop that down through that hole there and through this hole here. Now, once we do that, we can then adjust up those nuts just loosely, all by hand at this stage. Okay, now that arm is ready to go and install into the vehicle. Then we're going to get our angle gauge out and we're going to measure the pinion angle compared to the transfer case angle and we're going to make those two dimensions the same. That will mean that our universal joints on the tail shaft are operating correctly. That means no high speed drive line vibrations. How cool is that? Let's do it. So now I've got the two upper links in and temporarily adjusted as I showed you. Now, what I wanna do is measure the pinion angle. These digital gauges really are a great way to do this. So as an initial, I'm showing 1.8 degrees on my pinion angle. That needs to be 0.7 for my vehicle to be correct because I've got 0.7 degrees up there on my transfer output. So what we do now is we're just gonna whip these out and adjust them so that we start seeing that 0.7 degrees. Couple of tips for you. Put a jack under the front of the dip, that makes changing the angle a lot easier. And also just set up the, in my case, the 0.7 degrees with one link in First, do that first and then adjust the second link to suit, then uh, take the jack away and check your final dimension. Right, uh, that's all the control arms tightened up, so I'm ready to go and scratch up some superior engineering arms on the rocks. Alright, quick little tip before I go, whenever you're doing su suspension work, don't tighten things up until the vehicle suspension is at ride height. I hope you enjoy your superior engineering control arms. I'm Mad Matt, stay safe on the trails.